Hey, everybody. Welcome to Thursday's webinar with Wacom. Our guest today is Gina De Domenico. Uh, she's a super, super talented concept artist for uh, movies and films. And we're going to let the uh, room fill up here for a few minutes and then we'll get started. So thanks for joining us and hope you're having a great day. Gina, you seem to be very popular because we already have 112 people. No. <laughs> yes, that's great. That's great news. <laughs> so nice. Okay, we'll wait, a, wait about 30 more seconds before we get started. There's, there's quite a few other people. You're now up to 122, so. Did you know you had that many friends? No, but hopefully a lot of cosplayers because they're just so much fun. I love following them on Instagram and um, seeing how they cosplay all my the concept art and the characters. No, that's cool. That's cool. All right, I, I think we can get started. Uh, things your 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 people have started to slow down a little bit, so I think we have enough people in the room to to get started. My name is Doug Little. I work for the community team at Wacom, and uh, we have several people behind the scenes today: Peter Dietrich, Tom Festen, Elizabeth Garcia, and Shireen. Uh, they're all my colleagues at Wacom, and. Uh, they're helping out. Obviously, uh, Wacom has been around for a long time, 35 years. We've been making digital pen technology and uh, we make the world a more creative place. And that's what we're all about. And that's why we have Gina on today. So we're really excited to have Gina Domenico here. Um, a couple of uh, housekeeping items before we get started. Um, this is gonna be about an hour session, might go a little bit longer. We don't know yet, but uh, Gina will help us out with that. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, please post them in the Q&A, not the chat. Uh, I'll be reading the questions to Gina as they come in, and we'll try to answer all of your questions. So I just pop them in the Q&A, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, the Zoom session will be recorded, so you get to listen to it later at a later date. It'll be up on YouTube. So uh, there you go there. Um, we'll also be doing some polls throughout the, the uh, session. Um, so if you see a little poll come up, uh, please answer to your best abilities and, and uh, we'll have results of those immediately after they're done too. Um, so welcome Gina. Uh, this is a, a great thing that you're joining us. Uh, for those that you are, aren't familiar with Gina, she's uh, been a professional concept artist for many years. She's worked on a variety of blockbuster films and TV shows, including Galaxy Quest and Escape from LA. Uh, I think one of her favorite career highlights was working with Oscar winning costume designer Ruth Carter on such uh, projects as Malcolm X and Amistad, both great movies if you never saw them. Uh, she's currently working on five shows with uh, DC streaming on uh, Amazon, I believe. Mm -hmm. And at the end of our session today, we're going to have a cool, cool treat where she's going to uh, reveal a new character on the Amazon series, The Boys. So we'll get to that after she's done. So Gina, take it away, ah. here you go. Okay, hi everyone. Thank you for coming, so sweet. Um, basically today I'm gonna take you guys through my process. Uh, I'm not gonna draw a lot, but I'm gonna show you how, it go how what it's like to be a costume concept artist. And, um, so I'm hoping as I go through that you guys ask me questions instead of like piling it up at the end. I want to like have more of an interactive where I hear questions and I can answer questions as I show, as I show you my process. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take the screen now, right? And before you get started, uh, Gina, can you can you tell the because I'm sure we have a lot of list, young listeners on today um, interested in. Uh, concept art and costume design. How do you get started in a career in concept art? It uh, starts with school, of course. Um, I, when I started, which when you said my credits, you guys 
probably it was clear that I'd been around for a really long time. I started in the 90s and it was all, and I'll show you, it was all paper and, and gouache and, and uh, paintbrushes. And so the, the, the industry was completely different. So my education was illustration, fashion illustration, and I was training to be a fashion designer. So I didn't realize how much my education for fashion design was gonna make it so that I'm a better concept artist. Um, so if you wanna be a costume concept artist, you really need to not only learn the digital arts, like really learn the digital arts, but you have to have a traditional background, uh, illustration, you gotta be using charcoal, you gotta be using paint, because without that traditional background, when you you need that to carry you into the digital arts it just makes it you so much better so don't don't skip that part and if you did skip that part on weekends take classes um also you need to take fashion design classes uh or um history classes for costume any kind of costume class you've got you have to understand how each fabric is different how it lays on the body and you have to understand construction so what I do for the designer, a big part of what I do is when they express what their, their ideas to me, I'm able to put it on the body and make sure it works. I make sure all the seams are in the right place and all the hard surfaces are in the right place. And, and then if they lift their arm, that it's not the whole thing's not going to come up. You know what I mean? So, so it's really important to, to do your job properly. You, ha you have to have that education. Does, does, one, does one have to be in the LA area? Obviously, most films and TV shows are, are done in the LA area. Is that, is that a requirement? No. I'd like to say it is in the beginning of your career because you want to network and volunteer and um, be with like-minded people that are doing the same thing that you're doing. And then it, there's a, there's a lot of those people here in Los Angeles. And, and so that really helps you to, to have a jumping off point to then take your Cintiq and live in the world wherever you want to live. Um, because of the Cintiq, um, because of digital arts, we're able to not have to be in LA, but before that you had to be here. There was no, there, you had no choice at all. You had to be here and you had to be at the studio wherever or at the costume shop. You had to be sitting next to the designer who was guiding you the whole time. Now we're sharing screens all the time. And so especially now we're all learning how to work from home. But if it wasn't for, and if it wasn't for the Cintiq or, you know, I, it, I wouldn't be able to work. I, I wouldn't, none of us would be working right now. So I'm very grateful. Okay, so we, we have some other questions, but those kind of uh, apply to your workflow. So why don't, why don't you yeah. jump in and talk a little bit about what you do? Okay, so screen share. Okay, so tell me, you guys, I don't have to choose. Okay, does everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, so on the left was my old office. That was... Well, this is wherever I set up, this is what it looked like. I had a light board and um, it was all Bristol paper. Sorry, those are my shoes. Um, but this is how I used to work. Under my feet are, it's all my paint and it was crazy. My notes up on the upper left. It was very tactile. I felt so good being able to draw this way. And at the end you have a piece of artwork, but it was, it was very archaic. So I um, now work, this is my office to the right, and I have a Pro 32 at the office, which is here right now with me. I bring it wherever I go. <laughs> and um, all the beautifully printed artwork is up on the walls and I can make it anything I want. I can change colors. It's like when in the old days, if, if the designer said, you know, can I see it in red? It would be an entirely new day. I'd have to start all over with likenesses and everything and, and it would take 24 hours at minimum to do a new drawing. Now it's, it's just, as you guys know, it's just like that. So this was my office. Um, these are the boys characters and I just wanted to make sure everybody knew we're, we're going to be working on this 
this design, this concept art is, is what I'm going to be. It's Queen Maeve, um, Dominique. Okay, so what I start with is uh, I'm given the research. Um, at Laura, the, I'm working for Laura Jean Shannon, incredible designer. She's she and uh, her team in her office gather all the research um, before they have me start. And so this is just a couple little snippets of Queen Maeve. And for trouble hearing you. Sorry, that's my that's my watch. Um, I'll get images of Queen Maeve, which you see here, and then I'll get other images of 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 things that are in the same vein that feel like hmm what there there's something here there's these are really cool characters there's something here let's let's play with some of these shapes from these other characters see where it takes us and and you never have to worry about oh but this is a known character and, and i can't like steal you know it's like stealing this it's not because by the time you're done with whatever, however you see, say for example, this bodice, even if I want to copy it almost exactly, by the time I was done with it and it was fabricated, it'd be different. It's like we all put our own, we put our own selves in everything that gets designed or created. And so, and so to make a copy is really hard. So don't worry, be inspired by other people's work. Just make sure, you know, you push it, push it to what makes, makes it look good for you. Um, and then it'll end up being different, but you were inspired by that. So I start with inspiration. And then I have a meeting with, well, I have lots of meetings with LJ. She's just sit, sitting with me, all, visiting with me all the time. And we talk about who this character is, where is she in her life? Um, is she like, it, it, Queen Maeve right now is like this dance, she's like a tortured soul, right? So, so, but she's incredibly powerful. And so we go through all this and what I'll do is I'll come up with a whole bunch of poses and show Laura Jean the three of my favorite choices for poses. And I use pose space. And what's great about pose space, I'm gonna show you guys is you get all these turnarounds for post space. So if, if I don't, when I, when I do concept art, um, it's not just art. Um, I have to not only do a front view, I usually have to, I always have to do a back view, but sometimes I have to do a side view. And so when I pull images from the internet, I can't just pull a front view. Um, I have to have a matching back view at least. And so, um, Post space is great. And they're usually nudes. I just picked something that was dressed for this webinar, but nudes are better. Uh, you just paint over everything. Um, but so not only do I get this view, but if you tap it, I even get another, all these other views. And so they cost like six bucks and they're brilliant. The other one I use is DeviantArt. I love this girl. This girl's great. She comes up with stuff that's like, what? And, and I'd love to be able to use things like, like this, but being a concept artist also means that you're not just creating art, you're creating art that has to speak to every department. Um, so whatever Laura Jean talks to me about goes on paper and that goes to the workroom and the producer and the red director and the showrunner, and it's got to impress and pass through the upper levels, and, a, and, and then in the workroom and everybody in the office near you, they have to understand what that fabric is, how, where all the seam lines are. So you have all these constraints. And so, so one of them would be, I would never be able to put these arms like this because it covers the costume. So as a, con con as a concept artist, do you have to really kind of understand textures and fabrics and things like that? Oh, completely. Yeah, complete. You have to understand. And then some fabrics, how they stretch and how thin they would look on the body or how thick or how many, like some fabrics create big wrinkles. Some fabrics are, look like skin. So you, you, though that's all the fashion design school um, education that you'll get is you'll understand because you have to, you have to like, there's, they make you do a ton of homework on all different fabrics and how they lay on the body and how they stretch over the body and bias and and then you have to make clothes and that's another that's another 
that was torture for me. I never, I never have to make clothes again, but people love it. Ah, so, okay, so deviant art, right? Uh, the other one is Daz. Okay, so so when I did Queen Maeve, it was one of my first, The Boys was one of my first superhero shows. And so I wasn't hip on, on how to do this. So we picked this pose for Queen Maeve and it was just a bathing suit shot. And I ended up tortured because I didn't have a back view that matched. So nowadays I use Daz, which I want, I'm Daz, which I want to show you just really quickly. I'll build a pose in Daz, and I barely can use this, you guys. I just get in and I get out. What, but what's great about it is I can, I render it like this, right? And it's easy, these poses, as you see on the left, they're actually basically built already. Sometimes I'll move arms around or I'll move legs around, and it's not that hard. And then what's great is I can do my side, it's the exact same pose. Do you, do you, do you have to do the pose, uh, um, well, how can I put it? Are, are poses uh, purchased by you or by the production team? Um, by the production, the production po po buys everything. But I bought Daz and I bought Photoshop. I pay for all that. Got it. Um, they, in, they give you a kit rental when you work in the industry. And it's like 100 to 200, uh, um, mine's at 150. So it's, it's I, some artists get more, some less. Um, and it's supposed to cover all these kinds of costs. Or some things, like if you're going through, like we'll print all day long and ink is super expensive. The production will pay, pay for all my ink, but I own my printer. Um, so you guys get Daz, so now I get, oh my God, I get this exact view from the back, the exact pose. So that's, that's Daz. Okay. Okay, so that's how I get through. She picks the pose and now I move on and I, we've go, now we've got a cast member. Yay, thank you, we have a cast member. So what I'll do is I'll pick the best headshot that'll go with the pose and then I will, I will pull them together. So I'll pull them together like this. And so I work off, I always work off a nude. And then what I'll do is, is were there any questions in between? Uh, oh yeah, we have a ton of classes coming in, but uh, some of them aren't quite relevant to what you're doing now. Okay. But um, uh, how, how do you manage keeping your sketches consistent while maintaining deadlines? I, that might be better at the end, but um, yeah, I think you'll see at the end. Okay, great. You'll see. Um, okay, so then what I do is from here, and I have my inspiration, right? Here's, it's over, and, and I don't usually keep it on top here. So got this inspiration. Let's get it over here. So I'm thinking, okay. Um, okay, so. All right. So let's see, maybe, maybe it'll be like this and I'll do this and then we'll look for inspiration over here. Okay, that'll be like this. And so I'll just start doing some quick sketches like this that, that I, I see in, in the, in the, the inspiration, right? So, because I know this is the designer's inspiration for this character. So now it's, it's my job to translate now what I think would look good on her, on this body, which usually I figure out the, the body. Oh, and that's another thing. We get body scans of the actors. So I, we can, after I do the pose, we eventually get their exact body. And that's hey, what- Gina, is, is Daz free or is, it, is there a cost to it? There's a cost, I think. God, it's been so long. Ah, uh, okay. I Got think you. there's a cost. People are, people are curious. I think there's a cost to everything. You're gonna pay for it one way or another. <laughs> No, I'm sure it, it costs something. I just can't remember. Somebody just put something in the chat that Daz is free. Is it? Well, that's what somebody in the chat says. I know nothing about the program, so don't ask me. Okay, so, so now 
I've got, I've got a gray and I've got a, a skin tone, right? I'm going to put a, um, a, a mask on the, um, wow, all this stuff's coming in. It's going in front of my computer. I'm putting a mask. So this is how I come up with super quick concepts for the designer. This is the beginning of how, of how it goes. So I will do, I will do 20 to 30 of these. Say, I want this to be, and I'm just going really fast. I want this to be darker. So I will, um, this, uh, you guys get what I'm doing, right? Well, you'll see, you get kind of get what I'm doing. So what happens is I, I come up with shapes and quick sketches that ends up turning into this kind of thing, right? Another one, another one. And I'll do this all day long. For as long as the designer will let me, I'll keep going. And do, do you ever hand draw a posed figure? Uh, <laughs> or, or do you always start off? No, it's like photo bashing now. It's all, it's all like a form of photo bashing. No, I don't, I don't hand draw, but I will do a ton of paint over. So like, you can't just photo bash this head. Let's see how I did with this one. I put filters on it. So uh, sometimes I'll, I'll paint in here, but I'll put a filter, filter. Um, it's always uh, paint daubs. So a filter like paint daubs will take, will take a photograph and make it look much softer. Like just look at her hair, you know, it softens it and it gives it more painterly look. And then, um, you, you can you paint over the top. So it kind of gets you to the next level. You never, you never want sharp edges. You always want these soft edges. Um, no, otherwise it looks like a cut out paper doll. But this is still early on. This is still early on. I'm just trying to get all these concepts out for the designer and she's coming in, she or he is coming in and looking and guiding me and saying a little higher, a little lower, we're on the wrong track, let's go this way, let's go this way. And so it's this constant collaboration of me just sketching away with inspiration and um, the designer coming in and, and guiding me. Yeah, and how, how long do you spend on, on these early concepts? I mean, how much time do you spend working on them? That's, is some people say, how long does it take to do an illustration? And it's, it's funny because, um, hold on, because it could take, just to do this one illustration, it could take, which is not an illustration. It's, it's to do one concept all the way from beginning to end, it could take six months. Um, because you'll see when I get through this, this one hour, when we get to the end, you'll see all the different, how, how it grows and how it changes. And then even in the end, I have to, six months later, I have to make adjustments because the designer gets it to where she likes it. She's willing to show four. She shows four to the producer. The producer says, ah, 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 move it over here, over there. We come back to the drawing board. We make all those changes within what we think is, is appropriate or what we work on the body or what is right. Um, and then from there, it, it, once the, the producer says, I love it, then it goes to network and it goes, you know, it keeps going up the ladder. And so we're always making adjustments. And then when we go into production, we have to make more adjustments once it starts going onto her body, which I'll show you. Um, okay, so now after I've done all those rows in value, so I always work in gray. I usually don't even put color in their bodies, but this costume needs, needs skin to, you need to be able to see what's what skin and what's not because there's so much skin in this body, in this costume. Um, so I always work in value because good design or just the design is really clear in value. 
Color is distracting. You could love the color, but the design could be flawed or wrong or just not very good. So never go into color. And it's, it's always the, the, the final step. Okay, so you always have to look at your drawing or your art in with va value only if you can. Um, so then I go into color and um, so I'll, I'll be like, mm, okay, where should we put, where, where should we, I know, I know it's kind of basically what, what colors we're going to be using. So I'll add color to certain parts of it. Right. And I'll, now it's time. This was the chosen one now. So this was the winner so far. Now I'll take the winner. The only the winner gets to the color color gets to be, you know, worked on. So now I've taken the winner and now we've got, look how many different colorways. This, this is nothing. This, I could do 10 more different colorways, not color, just where the color goes. I could do it 10 more times, 10, at least 10 more. Um, so this is, this is, now we're at color. Now we're probably, we're probably two weeks or three weeks into this concept art. So again, concept art isn't, isn't this a beautiful picture? How often, how often do you have to change color? I assume that oh. uh, people, people argue about that all the time, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll get, they'll give me a swatch. Um, here's, here was some of the swatches I got. They'll give, but I get them, I get to hold them and touch them. And, and, and that's like what matters like too, is how it lays on the body. Um, but, um, I'll get these swatches and do the concept to keep working on the concept art. And literally it could change four or five more times before we're done. Sometimes all of a sudden we can't get the yardage. All of a sudden, you know, the, the dialogue came in different. Uh, so we have to start over again or, or, you know, it goes up to the powers that be and they don't like, they've decided we have to go with blue. It happens all the time. You have to, another thing about being in this business, you have to roll with the punches. You have to always be like, okay, I can do it. I got it. I got it. You know, you can never be like, what? I loved it in the, in the, this color. And I don't, I don't want to change it. Or I don't feel like it, or it looked great. Or wait, I have to go back and do it again. It's like, yeah, that's your job. Your job is to constantly be giving the show, the designer, whoever, what they need to do their job. It's and your do you, job. Do you, do you have any uh, favorite brushes in Photoshop when you're, when you're coloring? I only use one brush and it's the top first one. Everything I do literally is the top brush. The first one. It's this one. It's just, <laughs> it's just uh, I don't get it uh, because, because when, hold on, when, for example, I have all my quick keys, I can go up and down, make it hard and soft. And I go right and left and make it, I don't understand why anybody <laughs> needs anything else. And I know people buy brushes and they live for all these cool brushes and there's leaf brushes and there's cloud brushes and Well, it is it is one of the things about Photoshop. It's super, uh, super advanced and they've been adding to it for so many years that there are literally thousands of combinations. And when you get into that many combinations, y y you're right. Where do you start? <laughs> yeah, there is this one show um, by the one show I did God Godless. Yeah. And they were Western. It was Western um, concept art. And so it had a really gritty look and to, to the, you know, it needed to have a gritty look. And so I took a brush that was like a fan brush and I used it to erase around the edges of the drawing. So it kind of had that old photograph look. So I have used other brushes and I do appreciate them. But my workflow is, can't be bothered by, by, I just, I'm just, I plow through with just this brush. And here, here's an appropriate question um, from a, from a viewer. Uh, do, uh, hang on just a second. Let me get it back here. Um, uh, do you have a, do you have a favorite uh, methodology when approaching initial designs that help you visualize the overall aesthetics of a particular costume? A method. Well, Basically, I'm taking you through my, my process, my thought process, but basically I immerse myself in 
the research. And then I read all about the character. I have to understand who this character is. I have to like, you, you can't, I can't do like a perky illustration with someone who's about to die and, you know, and, you know, and is a drug addict. You know, I, I, I really, you have to feel who, who it is by looking at the concept art. And that's part of selling the costume. Um, it's part of my job to make sure that not only th that the pose and the mood even in the background goes hand in hand with the costume. It's all one. Did that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. Somebody, a couple of people have chimed in and said, yeah, it's all about, it's all about research and getting close to the, to the actor or yeah. actress. Absolutely. Yeah. And understanding. The fans, like uh, luckily I read comic books and I was a huge a comic book collector um, when I was younger and I had to stop <laughs> in my mid twenties, I had to stop um, for other reasons, but it, anyway, so I lost touch with comics in my, in my mid twenties, um, but uh, I still have them all They're in my garage and I love them. And, and because of the way I feel about certain characters and their costumes, when I see movies that veer really far away from the original it really cra makes me crazy so so there's always a, an awareness in our office that we honor the fans we're all geeks in the office and and i i'll fight i'll just we all fight to keep to keep the costume as close as possible to the comic book and Sometimes that we can't because of the powers that be or because it just wouldn't stay on the body. Some things are floating on the body. And some people don't have the body that the, 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 the cast people that don't have the body that the actual character has, which is almost impossible. So they usually build the body in, in a, in a bodysuit underneath. But um, it's really important for us to honor the fans. Should I move on? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Thank unless you. there's yeah. any questions. Okay, you're looking at fabric. Sorry, that's kind of boring. Okay, so the next step of this illustration is I add in texture, right? So I'm getting, they showed me the fabric, right? This one, oops, this one here. And so now I know to put it into here. And, uh, they, and I put the texture. So now I'm adding all the texture and everything and, and a, little, some, a little bit of lighting. I'm digging into this illustration a little bit more, right? So once the, this was like, okay, we've kind of got it. We're, we're, we're really close. Now it's gonna go and start going into, well, it's gonna go into the fitting stages soon. Let's see, hold on, what do I have next? Oh, well, the next one was, well, is she gonna be blonde? And then everybody's talking about if she's gonna be blonde. I don't know if she's gonna be blonde. We need to do hair studies. And this is stuff that you don't, I don't think anybody thinks about when they see concept art. Well, this was one page of like four that I did of every hair color you could think of on the planet. And they had to see the hair color with the costume. Cause it, you know, and how does it make her look? Does she look stronger? Does she look weaker? Does, you know, so we went into hair color. And then I go into, okay, now things are gonna be made. So special effects needs to front side and the back, which is what we were talking about, that front side and the back. Um, they need to see what this looks like all the way around. And if I was ZBrush literate and all my other concept artists that are, if you guys are watching this, they've all been screaming at me and I've had this time during COVID to learn it, but oh, it's really hard. ZBrush is this, I just getting my brain, it was, I think getting my brain into just switching over from paper to Photoshop was like, I still am like taking a breather, but I need to learn ZBrush. And if I learned ZBrush, I could mold this myself but instead it, it'll go to special effects and they have somebody in the office that will do it. The other concept artist in my office, Greg Hopwood, just faced his fears and started working in ZBrush. And now he takes all his illustrations, concept art to the next level and he's able to 
go into, okay, now Queen Maeve, you know, now he's going to mold the, the helmet and, and do everything. So some stuff gets um, molded in clay by special effects and some gets 3D printed. So now I have to, I have to do a study on everything on her body that would be molded because I have to show what it looks like all the way around. So, and then, does anybody think about the back? The back, now this is only one panel of probably about four panels I did, as you can see. So what I do is I know where the side seams are, right? Um, I know where each mark is from the front on where it ends, like where the, where the seam would be or the color would end. And so I hit those marks now every time but now I change what's going on here, right? So, and also I knew the strap came from here, here and here and here. So I've got to rework like which looks better. So then LJ, Laura Jean would say to me, okay, you know, you're on the right track. This is great. This is what I want. This is what I was thinking. It's perfect with the, with the inspiration. I like this one with this back. You know, cause I don't, if I think about what looks good together, like in the beginning, I did a ton of boots, ton of different boots. But if I thought, oh, that short boot doesn't look good with the one I'm sketching above. No, I just like barrel through it. I, I, I don't worry about if this strap looks good with this swirl. I can't. I, if I start worrying about making the outfit perfect, I can't barrel through this and be creative because I know the designer will come in and be like, I know, okay, I, you know, yes, but let's do it this, let's, we're gonna do it this way. And so this is when we start color. Okay, after color and after I do all those, um, um, after I do all the studies of like what I didn't show you, the belts, I did a belt study and this study and I did a study on these and, and this. Um, after I do all those studies, then we go into call outs because everybody in every department needs to know what fabric is what. It's, it's a map. So this was our Fabric number one, where is it on the body? So there's no mistake. So no one from when the sewing department comes in and goes, wait, I don't get it. I don't understand from your illustration because it's too dark or it's moody. You know, you, you have to be really careful with your illustration. Um, now this shows exactly where that fabric is, right? So, and these are called call outs. This fabric's here. This one's here. The boot fabric here. These are sculpted elements. So these we all know these are hard, hard sculpted elements. And then there was how, how much how much how much input does the the actress or actor have on costume design? Is there is there any at all? No, it's usually it's it's usually pretty done by the time designed by the time they come in for their fittings. They have a big impact on if something's uncomfortable, um, but not really design, I'd say. I'm gonna say not really. Um, okay, so those are call outs. The only call out I don't show here is the diadem, which, is, which was 3D printed, but I will show you a picture of what that looks like. Um, okay, fitting. So first fitting, any questions? Should I stop? No, you're good, keep going, yep. This is great. Okay. okay. Uh, first fitting is in foam. It's this foamy stuff. When I saw this, I was like, what? How is that ever going? How are they ever going to figure out what this is going to look like with that foam? Um, um, so first fitting. So this is where they take the foam and they start cutting it up and LJ will say, I don't like how it cuts her right here. We got to bring it down. And, and uh, the, maybe, you know, every, every edge, every seam now is, is scrutinized and cut up with scissors and taped back together. Like, you know, tape. I mean, we, it, it's, 
it's really fun. The first fitting is super fun. And, and the, the first fitting also, I usually get to draw. They usually wear body suits. This one, this one was different. The actors wear body suits and I get to draw all the seam lines on the body suit. So it's almost like a map of where everything is. And um, so, yeah, as you can see, everything's in, everything's in foam. And then here's a, another view. It's kind of a blurry view, but it's of the side in foam. And, and um, then from there, as you can see, my illustration is, is a map for everyone, even the sculptors in special effects, which is CCE, they're, they're amazing. Um, so now it goes, it gets sculpted. A lot of, whatever is a sculpted element gets sculpted. And so here's the beginning, is that like amazing? I couldn't believe it when I saw this. Um, and I'm sure they're using these measurements because they couldn't put clay on her or they, they use these measurements. But here's where I talked about the, um, the body, the, um, you guys, what is it called? Uh, um, 3D scan body. This is actually the actress's body. So, and we have them also in where they're making the clothes. They, they drape on their actual body. Um, so they go for their 3D scans of their head, of every, everything, their hand, everything. And um, so that is when it gets sculpted. Any questions? Uh, not, not right now. We've got some, I'm going to, I'm going to save to the end. And okay. Then, yep. Yep. Cause they're more philosophical than. <laughs> okay. Anything. Okay. So here's, they also sculpt in wax. I don't quite understand why wax over the, the, when the two use wax and then when not to use wax, but this, these are wax sculpts. And, um, there's the shoulder. And as you can see, they, so they'll do things like put all this, this aging into it. And then LJ will come in and go, you know what? No, I don't like that. I don't like it there. I don't like it here. Let's, let's not have it as aged as much. Let's make it look newer or opposite. So will say no, older, yuckier, you know, let's, let's make it look like she's been in massive fights for a long time. So there's a lot of control here. So the drawing is, is an inspiration to this part of it. And, but then this part has a whole nother design. There's a whole nother department that's designed, that's part of the, the design process, you know? Um, so this, this was, uh, what, how, I think this one was, I don't know if this was a final or not, but you know, you can see the progression from here to here, of course. And then this one was one of the, what, this was actually the second version. So they, they do this in and uh, this is a trial. So they don't worry about color or anything like that. This was a trial to see if it fit. And then they go into a final. And then this is the diadem. This is what ZBrush and 3D, this is how you have to, um, if I knew ZBrush, I would have been able to do this and create the diadem that I illustrated. And it makes sense that I would do it because I was illustrating. I was there from the beginning. Um, but it's, it's, it's another program that, you know, to learn. So if you are a student, learn ZBrush, learn ZBrush. Okay, so that's fittings. Then I get cool things if I need them. Like from set design, I'll get, um, I'll ask for, and sometimes these are around the office, what the sets look like because I want to put my, my concept art um, in the set. So like, for example, here was her final. And as you can see right here, I used, I, I was, I used right here. And so I drug it around all over the place. I made it bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller and, and decided, but I like definitely the fun of making sure that my concepts are potentially in a background that makes sense, um, that goes with who they are and what their mood is or where they, where they usually go. It all has to go together. You don't, it's nothing's you know, out of the ether. Um, and then this is, this is, as you guys know, how she turned out. Um, that's it. 
That's great. That, yeah. That's it. So, so how, how has, uh, how has working digitally, uh, improved your, your workflow? And, and it must be something that's almost needed nowadays, especially under COVID-19, right? Almost needed. Um, when I came back into the industry seven years ago and I only, I still had my light board, everybody was using, um, the, the Cintiq and I walked in and I sat down and I started drawing and I, I don't know if he told you this, but the, the, I got laughed at and it was horrible, but, but it was, it was one of those horrible things that happened to you and you either can like go home and cry or you can get mad and like do something about it. So I got mad, did something about it and put my light board away and never brought it out again and started just digging in and I found a teacher and the only way to work now is digital in my industry and and all of the the other ones that I see in the in the movie industry it's all digital it's just being able to communicate just being able to send emails or send artwork like LJ just asked me an hour and a half ago you gotta make this more yellow okay more yellow bang send it to her you know so it's it's it if I got that note and I had paper, I'd be like, okay, tomorrow I'll mail you an illustration. I mean, there's, it's, it's impossible. So you have to be digital. There's, there's in my world, uh, you just, you won't work. You won't yeah. work that much. Yeah, that makes sense. That, that makes perfect sense. I don't want to work. Do you have any more questions? Oh yeah, I, I have a ton of questions, but here, here's, an inter <laughs> here's an interesting one. So, uh, I'll, I'll actually read this one. I'm an older person. I've been a tailor on film and TV for 10 years, designed costumes for, for small venues for 20 years, learned how to illustrate with watercolor. I want to change into doing illustration and less construction. Advice on where to even begin with that. I live in New York. Do you have any help? Yeah, well, is he in a union? I wonder if he's in a union because the union offers, okay, unions. If you want to work in my industry, you, in the movie industry, you have to be part of a union. And so when you have an inkling after you go to school and learn a whole bunch of cool things, um, if you have an inkling of what you want to do, like as, for example, being a costume concept artist, then you need to join the guild that, that is the home for your classification. So my classification is, is housed at the Costume Designers Guild. So there's costume designers, uh, assistant costume designers, and costume concept artists. So I had to join the guild, and you have to call the guild office and find out how to join. Now, when you join and after you join, you fill the requirements and join, there's things offered to you like classes. So you it, classes are insanely expensive like just for uh intro to photoshop is is here it cost me fifteen hundred dollars i didn't do it because through my union there's free classes that are every weekend uh for you can learn whatever you need to learn and go to work and it's free so try to, if you're part of a union in New York, try to access or call them and find out where the classes are. Sometimes you have to pay up front, but then your union uh, covers, covers it. You get it back. Um, that's first thing, uh, uh, take classes. You just have to dig in and, and not be afraid. And I did it. I did it at 49. At 49, I went from, I, I did not even know what a computer was. So that's why I, but you have to also at our age, um, really decide what it is that you want to do. If you know, and well, if you know what you want to do, really just learn that. Like there are tools in Photoshop. I have no clue. I have no idea, but I know how to do what I do really well. So I don't have to know everything. I just need to know what, what, Otherwise, it'll make you crazy. I mean, there's so many programs that I, need, I should learn. But at my age, it really is focus on exactly what you want. What I did was I couldn't find a class that I took every class I could, but there was no class that taught me exactly what I needed to know for my job. And I knew what my job entailed, what I just showed you guys. And so I found a private teacher that knew Photoshop inside and out. And he, 
and I had him teach me how, what I needed to know. It took a year, a lot of tears, but a year. Yep. So a lot of people are asking where the Costume Designers Guild is located. I assume it's in LA, correct? Burbank. Yeah, LA, Burbank. Uh, and do they have a website? Do you know it offhand? They do. Uh, CostumeDesignersGuild.com, I'm pretty sure. Okay. All right. And Great. Talk to then Suzanne. Every, everybody listening, there you go. Yeah. And, but like, if you think you might be a storyboard artist or a mat artist or a scenic artist, that's 800. So there's, look up, there's all sorts of different unions and they, their classification, they have a list of classifications. Ours only has three, 800 union, uh, IAC 800 probably has um, probably eight classifications. Um, so there's all sorts of different types of art in the industry. It's, it's shocking once you dig in set does set artists i mean it's set painters there's it's there's a ton it's fun and it's also really smart like not because of my union i have a pension and i have health insurance like the so the best health insurance of anybody i know so i'm i get to be an artist and i also get to have the luxuries that people have in, in other kinds of positions. Usually artists are like, you know, starving and, and struggle. And that's not the case if you're in a union uh, in the industry, in our industry. And that's cool. And uh, you also give back, you teach at UCLA, right? You want to yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I was, it was when I came back into the industry, um, when I had to switch from paper to digital, I decided that year that I had to do everything that terrified me. You know, when I wanted to say no, I said yes, of course, within reason. But UCLA reached out to the concept artists and said, hey, we're looking for a teacher. And I responded first, even though I didn't want to. Oh my God, I did not want to teach class. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I, you, we're all, we all feel like frauds. And so um, I said, yes, I'd love to do it. And I found out that, thank God, I, and I, I didn't, oh God, I did not. Who wants to be in front of a whole bunch of people and, and talk and teach them stuff? But, well, maybe some people, I don't know. I just wanna hide in the back of the room all the time. So um, it was, it made me Re I had to go through everything of why do I do what I do? Why do I work in value? Why, what's, why is this important? Why is line quality important? Why is mood? Like all these things I had to relearn because I just did them. I didn't know, I didn't know why I did it. I couldn't remember why I did it. I just did it. So I went back into how do I teach what I do? And so having to relearn it was a reminder and it made me better. And then being around young people, made me even better at what I do because they taught me or when I, I taught Photoshop a couple times, which is completely insane because I was just learning Photoshop, but I started teaching it and I just didn't let them know that. I thought if I'm one step ahead, I'm one step ahead, I'm okay. And that was terrifying, scared me again, but I did it and learned so much because the, the kids are like raised their hand. They're like, wait, why are you doing it that way? Because that way is like this long arc. Why don't you just do that, this shortcut. And it's like, oh, oh my God. So I learned a ton and we had a blast. So um, do things that, that you want to say no to and that, that frighten you. And that's, that's a great way of, to grow, to grow as an artist. Yeah, back, back, a question uh, back to the Consumer Designers Guild. Um, somebody says that you need three letters of recommendation to join for illustrators. Mm -hmm. And they were wondering if you have any tips for getting recommendations from designers. <sighs> Well, um, if you work as a PA, uh, everybody kind of pays their dues and, and we have PAs that come in that work for very little. Some of them work for free. You can, you can find a PA job and if you, that's the way to start meeting people and getting letters of recommendation. Because if you have a great work ethic, they'll, they'll recommend you. It's, it's, you just have to start digging in and, and, and putting your toe in, in the pool and, and getting your feet wet. Yep, uh, and then somebody's asking, um, yeah, never mind, it's, it's fine. That was, that was a great answer, thanks. <laughs> uh, 
it's all about getting involved and, and volunteering. It's about, like I volunteered for the Comic Con committee. I was, and that's the first year again. I thought, what else can I do? I'll volunteer at my guild. Cause that was your guild. The, the union is also a social outlet to meet people and to, to get into that web that you need to get into to start working. And so I volunteered for Comic Con and that's how I met Doug, who's, who's talking to me right now. He, I called him for a year. Oh, for a year. He didn't call me back for a whole year, but once he did, and that's also persistence. He didn't call me for a year, but once he did, we're now buddies, right, Doug? We are, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So dig in, yeah, volunteer, get involved, find a way to get involved. Call the guild and say, how do I get involved? Like, how, how, how do I get the letters of recommendation? Just start asking. Start planting seeds. All your friends say, oh, I want to do this. Anybody have any advice? Oh, you know what? I know a costume designer that's doing a student film over, you know, at the university. And then you're like, oh, can I have their number? I'm going to call and get on that set and see if I can help. You go help for the weekend. You have your letter of recommendation. It's like you, you, just, you, you just talk about it. You plant seeds. You look for opportunity. You walk through that door. Cool. Now you, you went to Parsons, but uh, is is a formal education a requirement for costume designers? Costume designers, no. Ah, okay. And concept artists, how about that? Concept artists, absolutely. A absolutely. Formal education? I guess you could learn it. You could learn everything on your own. Well, I think it's like anything. It can't help. I mean, education is a passport, right? So, yeah. Yeah. You're. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's a passport. If I didn't graduate from Parsons, they couldn't, they, I couldn't have taught at UCLA. So, um, yeah. And it, people don't really ask you where you graduated from. Not in my industry. Sometimes it's a talking point and it's nice and it's comforting for people to know you graduated from a really hard, you know, art school or whatever, but it's not really asked. It's, it's, it's what people want to see to hi that hire you are that you are the kind of person they want around, that you're fun, that your work ethic is I'll be there a minute early and I'll stay a minute late. And that sometimes in my industry can be before six and after nine. But it's like that in waves. You go in waves of just craziness and then you'll have a week or two where there's nothing. So you got to roll with the punches. Like I said in the beginning, you always have to roll with the punches and you got to kill it always. You got to always be there. There are no, there's not, it's not nine to five and you go home, you have your weekends. It's just not like that. But I like it because there's a sense of freedom in it where I don't want, I don't, the cookie cutter doesn't, doesn't work for me. I need, I need, I guess I need a little bit of, of I'm going to work crazy for a month and then I'm going to go to Italy for two weeks. You know, I, I need that. I, I can't do it the other way. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of foreign countries, we have a lot of foreign listeners on right now. So they're asking about, uh, are there things similar to the costume designers guild internationally? Where do people go Ooh. for that kind of stuff? Actually call the guild. They will know. I'm not sure. I, I can't imagine there isn't, but I've not, I've not asked or heard about that yet. Okay, gro groovy. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's let's do your reveal here. What what do you what do you what, what's what's your surprise? What's your okay, surprise well, for you everybody? Know, you guys have seen Stormfront, but you haven't seen the concept art. You haven't seen the concept art. Um, so here we go. I'll show you guys Stormfront. This is this is this <laughs> took a really long time. This was months and months and months. She got kicked back a lot, but this is how she ended up. And she's gonna, the boys airs uh, beginning of August. Um, we're really close, really excited because there's some crazy stuff that happens. I can't even believe I said that. The boys is so crazy already, but it gets, it seems to get a little bit crazier. Um, so uh, season two, this is our, this is our big character for season two, Stormfront. And uh, she, and I'm sure everybody knows, this is, this is how she turned out on the left. 
because uh, um, Entertainment Weekly did a reveal of, of this costume, of, but not of the, the concept art. So um, yeah, so there she is. There she is. I, they, I was so excited because they said, no, I couldn't show the concept art. Amazon just gave me the, the uh, gave us the green light that we could show the concept art. So they've been hiding it. They've been hiding it but up, up till now. Well, that's very nice of them to let you do it on our webinar. That's yeah, fantastic. Which is great. And I would have taken you guys through the building of her, but also when you're in my industry, you sign non-disclosure agreements and you can't show anything for years. So for example, I did this quite a while ago and you have asked me questions about it. If, you, if anybody had questions, it's like, uh, I might, I have to think about it because, and like Queen Maeve was three years ago. Um, the stuff I've done, I can't even tell you the illustrations on what characters are coming up for a lot of the shows I'm on. It's all, especially with comics, it's such a big secret. It's, <laughs> it's secret. And so I can show you fitting photos. I can't show you even like the, the, you know, how the belt was made. I can't show you anything, even though she's right here, she's standing right here, but it's still all under wraps. So what are, what are your, what are some of the, and you're gonna ask me now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are the most fun, what are the most fun shows you've ever uh, done? Oh. I mean, I mean, there must be you, some highlights in your career where you said, "Oh, that was incredible." These ones, not this one. What I'm doing now. Um, all the shows I did before, other than I guess Galaxy Quest, that was fun. But um, the shows I'm doing now are all superhero shows for the last three years, and so I'm in heaven. I'm absolutely in heaven. The, the ones I did before were like, um, uh, you know, shows with beautiful gowns and, and Western outfits and, and I loved it. Or, or a lot of, I did um, Star Trek, so that was fun because I got to do like the, the Vulcans and, and, and uh, space suits and that was, that was, I have more fun when I do those kinds of things versus, you know, the, the beautiful gowns. Um, I like doing this stuff. So I'm in heaven now. And, and I don't think there's one project that I've liked through my whole career. I just love to draw. And so if I'm, whatever I'm on to next, I'm so happy. I'm so happy and so excited to what, whatever's next. I don't think I've ever been bored ever. Like I'll sit to draw and, at 8 a.m. and I will not drink or a, 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 well, anything and it'll be like 6 p.m. at night and it's like there's a glass of water next to my desk and I'm like wait what happened where's the sun and so it's I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do because I, I love it so much. Do you have any uh, do you have any tips and tricks for people working on their portfolio anything that they should do? I guess don't put anything in that your question that you don't like or question about everything, everything, all your art. If you want, if, if you really want to look at it fresh, look at it in a mirror. Of course, if you're doing it digitally, you can flip it. That's why artists flip all the time. Always terrified. I, I'm so scared to flip my art all the time because I'll see all the, you, you see all the problems when you, when you flip your art the other way and um, look at it in the mirror, um, put in things you love, uh, if it, and then curtail it to if you're trying to get into the costume designers guild as a concept artist, then pick a couple movies, do some illustrations of the costumes in those movies, um, and uh, uh, curtail your portfolio to what you're you're trying to get, what you want, and talk to everybody. Don't be afraid. Like if you want to know what to put in your portfolio, call the costume designers guild or whatever guild. There's super, everybody is so nice. Don't ever be afraid. We're all just nice people trying to help each other. That's true. We can attest that all the people you've introduced to us are, are very, very Aww. kind and friendly, especially you. Aw, thanks. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I think, I think we're coming up on the hour mark, so. Um, Thanks, thanks, Gina, for uh, Welcome. joining us. I, I, everybody really appreciated you coming on. We've been having lots of comments in the chat, and um, I think you've provided a lot of great info, and you've inspired a lot of people. Uh, so that's what these webinars are for. And we thank awesome. you a lot for joining us. Ah, oh, thank you.
I loved it. All right. Thanks, everybody. And uh, have a good Thursday. And thank you again, Gina, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Okay, bye. Bye.